guidelines are important for physicians and patients uh, for several reasons. One is that we never know who is going to diagnose, see, and manage a neuroendocrine patient. While I think we'd all like to think that patients will all find their way to a center of excellence where there are experts that are very familiar with the disease and all the, the steps of, of what should be carried out in treatment. Got to be absolutely clear from looking at national data that the majority do not. There's some truth in that, and that so most uh, physicians, whether they're gastroenterologists, medical oncologists, interventional radiologists out in in, in the country, um, they they may have very limited experience seeing uh, any neuroendocrine patients, and so this is a resource they can go to directly and follow guidelines of of how they should manage that patient and what should be done and what perhaps should not be done. You know, guidelines are important for all cancers. Um, I would say, especially for rare cancers, there needs to be an easy place for community oncologists or non-experts to look at the most recent algorithms for how to treat patients. So if a primary, if the primary uh, pediatric oncologist has a patient come in with a neuroendocrine tumor and they've never treated one before, they can immediately look up the guidelines and see uh, what tests they should do locally and then call us uh, and find out where there is a special uh, center next to them that can, can help them complete the workup and treat if necessary. There are two main sources of guidelines. The first is are the NCCN guidelines, the National Comprehensive Cancer Network guidelines. The other are the um, NANETS guidelines, the North American Neuro Neuroendocrine Tumor Society. That's the professional society for, um, for providers who take care of patients with NETS. And there are individual guidelines based on diseases. And I think that those serve as a very important resource for non-experts, community physicians, even experts. I'll, re I'll refer to those every once in a while if I want to review a specific nuance or point. In neuroendocrine tumors, it's complicated. We're uh, stuck with a situation where most of our questions don't have good scientific data behind them. And what we've tried to do is to highlight, you know, the studies in our guidelines, at least in the surgical guidelines, uh, what the study showed and what the limitations of the study were. Well, the National Cancer Institute has uh, had guidelines out there for many of the more frequently seen cancers. They've had guidelines out there for a long time on prostate cancer, on breast cancer, on colon cancer. The neuroendocrine tumors were so rare that they didn't have guidelines on those. So the, neuroendocrine, the North American Neuroendocrine Tumor Society took it upon themselves to write the first guidelines in the United States and then they were so useful to people around the country that the National Cancer Institute recognized that and, and now is helping NANETS to, to keep these updated. So, you know, we're making progress and these guidelines need to be updated every three to five years. The purpose of the guidelines, I would say, is several fold. Um, they're usually assembled by a group of experts, uh, and usually those committees are multidisciplinary in nature, which reflects the way we care for patients with neuroendocrine tumors. So often involves surgeons, nuclear medicine experts, medical oncologists, pathologists, radiation therapists sometimes, endocrinologists. And I think these help frame the question and the, the, the unknowns related to the disease, and the group tries to think about a rational approach to that question. The guidelines are really a great way to make sure that the way we are treating our patients is the most up-to-date and standard of care. Now, that being said, it's incredibly important as physicians that we continue to update ourselves and keep reading the papers and the studies that come out and go to these national meetings like Nanette's and learn about the new treatments that are coming down the pipeline. Well, Nanette's is a North American Neuroendocrine Tumor Society. We have annual an annual conference that tries to hit upon uh, most of these different specialties and allow clinicians in different areas to learn what other people are doing that will help them guide their treatment uh, planning for patients. And the goal is ultimately to try to help practicing providers um, provide good care and uniform care for patients with neuroendocrine tumors. Um, for patients, perhaps it might help them 
better understand the treatment options that are available to them. Um, and also I think it helps us as specialists in neuroendocrine tumors identify the gaps in the field and areas for which there are very little data to guide us.